Okay, so this is a, I think, um, fairly urgent call, I gather, for purposes of implementation. Um, the agenda is mostly about facility types and more specifically disambiguating between facility type, surface type, um, so things like 3G, 4G, 5G pitches and things, um, and venue, indoors and outdoors. Um, also, uh, Jamie emailed earlier with uh, another point for the agenda, which will come to you under uh, AOB. Um, so the issue with facility type, surface type, and venue is simply that they've all got a bit tangled with each other um, because they've all got overlaps with each other to some extent. And we had um, uh, a sort of controlled vocabulary for these things contributed to some extent by, by Sport England. Um, which, which jumbled all of these together. And we kind of keep on converging into melding all of these three things, these three concerns. Um, so if you click on the, on the issues link there, um, you end up with this very, very long thread which discusses these three things weaving in and out of each other all the time. Um, because there's a kind of overlap between what a facility is intended for, um, you know, essentially what kind of sport activity can take place within it, um, what it's made out of. Uh, so you the surface on pitches and that kind of thing. No, I'm getting to the three. Great. Yeah. Um, and then there's an overlap between what the facility is made of and whether it's indoors or outdoors. So whether a football pitch is an internal pitch or an external pitch also uh, leads into it a bit. Um, and it does seem like we need to represent all of these things. None of them are disposable, um, but trying to create a neat way of dealing with this has turned complicated. Um, so the proposal currently where we got to um, is actually to separate these out into two separate concerns. Um, dealing with indoor outdoor fairly straightforward, have a controlled vocabulary on a, on a new data point, facility setting type, um, that would just indicate whether it was indoors or outdoors. Um, that seems fairly cut and dried. Um, and then have facility type used for both surface and activity, um, or the activity type for which it's intended. But despite having those in one controlled vocabulary, using SCOS constructs to separate those two out for machine parsing. So it'll be one controlled vocabulary, um, just flat, um, but it would um, be annotated with is surface or a similar property um, if it were um, uh, about surface and it would be unannotated or annotated differently uh, if it were for the facility type uh, that is being represented. Um, that is about it um, in terms of the complexity. Um, I suppose it would be possible to argue that we should have these three concerns split out into three separate properties. I think the SCOS solution effectively does that. Um, where are we on implementation? Is this, are, is this representing a state of play that already exists? Yeah, so uh, that's a so yeah, it's a really good segue to um to what I maybe maybe kind of uh, the contentious point, mm -hmm. um which so so it seems like we've got this, uh so far, um but the the contentious point is really where the current the this conflicts with, I mean this actually should probably be uh, an issue that brings both together in fact, but um so for school space for example, um we have given them the uh, kind of, you know, you need to make your data open and they've gone great. Okay, we'll go and describe our data. Um, and they've looked through the, the specs and they found the activity list, which is like mm -hmm. 600 something activities. Um, and, they've, and they've asked the question, um, so we need to tag our drama studios and our dance spaces with the activities in the activity list, do we? Um, and uh, well, the, currently the spec says, yes, that's what you should do. Um, and so obviously the, also the spec says you can use the facility type list to describe those spaces, which is the, uh, the proposal in front of us. Um, and so uh, we can kind of say, well, yeah, you can use facility type to tag. We haven't got dance studio in there yet, but you, you know, there, there might be some things like that coming And this. This is, uh, I guess, a discussion that would potentially 
expand that list out to include other types of, uh, of spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, but then on the other side, it's that acti activity uh, tag is still required from an open active perspective. So they're then uh, in a position where they have to go and tag, I think they said something like 900, um, yeah, different, exactly, um, uh, 900 different uh, activities, uh, sorry, uh, uh, spaces with different activities. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to exactly that. So um, I guess maybe there's a, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I realize I might be just jumping into the next part of the discussion without realizing to me on the agenda there, but um, so uh, I guess maybe is it, it's, it seems like we've got uh, facility use already in play uh, with a number of organizations. Um, I know that um, Matt, who's on the call, has implemented it. Um, Gladstone has implemented it. I don't know, Tom and Jamie, you've already implemented facility use, have you, or not yet? Um, yeah, we have. Um, so, yeah, it's implemented our biggest challenges around like multi use space. Yeah, right. I'm sure you end up with a it. huge list of activities yeah. because, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, and surface types and all that sort of stuff. And for an end user, it's slightly, well, very confusing. Um, I think we're just on the activity list, but I need to check. Yeah. Right, okay. So you've got, so you've got a situation where we've got, we've got facility types, which currently doesn't include the kind of, the, the kind of core needs of a dance studio or a multi-use games area, things okay. like this. And yeah, at the moment, no, which I guess is now. And then um, the you've got activity, which is this kind of massive yeah. list of uh, activities, which we're asking people to change. So, um, yeah, just to add, Nick, so I shared the list with you yesterday. All of those spaces are fairly self-explanatory. There's only a small number of activities that could take place within those original, like say a pitch or a core or a um, yeah. et cetera. However, yeah, as soon as you go mode multi-use, it just exponentially, <laughs> the options are, are quite crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I'll paste your on. I just wouldn't know if you didn't even share that. I'll paste that into the, um, the issue. And in fact, put it into this chat here. But Sorry, you... Nick, could you just speak up a little bit? I can't quite. Oh, sorry. You're up. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, yeah, this um, this is uh, just put in the chat the list that Tom has provided of what uh, which um, of the activities from the activity list are currently being used um, for specifying the facility uses. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jamie has a, has posted in an email a similar list, I think, mm -hmm. attached, which is the number of the activities. So, I mean, the, the, the headline there is we've got 600 different activity types, you know, bat and twirling and all sorts. Um, and uh, you can effectively tag a space at the moment as bat, a bat and tw twirling uh, zone and, um, and other things like that. <clears throat> so um, I suppose that is the question is, um, yeah, looking through Jamie's list as well, We've got um, similar situation where there's only a, there's only a handful of them uh, that are actually in use. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not actually too sure what the point of contention is because it seems it seems like from what you've just said it would make sense to have multi-use facility and this touches on on what Jamie said earlier. Um, or you know, uh, space higher or something like that. You know, you can have these very broad, generic kind of categorizations that are understandable, I think, by most consumers, right? And that would be a facility type, um, and that would be easy enough to simply include in a facility type controlled vocabulary. I mean, because the controlled vocabulary would just be kind of a bag, right? It's very unstructured. It's very you know, it's essentially arbitrary list of list of terms um, that would be, I think, flat. So it's, you know, implementation would be fairly straightforward that way. Yeah, so I suppose that, well, I suppose this is the thing, because people have already implemented different parts of this. That's the question. There's obviously going to be a little bit of rework here required. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And that may be the contention, because we've already, I know James kind of got a lot of stuff hanging off the activity list. Mm -hmm. If you were basically to say, and this is the maybe this is the, the the contentious proposal 
if we were basically to say um, all the things that I've just put in the chat there, which is the combination of what uh, Jamie and Tom have both um, found used of mm -hmm. the activity list, which actually includes things that aren't in the activity list. I know um, in book tech, you can actually add custom uh, entries and you've got things like drama classes and educational activities and all sorts. Um, so if we were to, um, to for the sake of for facilities only, um, move away from the activity list, and actually have the, the facility type list as the list, mm. which is what is used centrally. Make sure it includes football pitch, make sure it includes all the main uh, types uh, of, of facility. And they can be tagged against activities. So we can put uh, football against football pitch, but mm. the data, the, the people who are using the systems would be selecting from options like uh, football pitch, football pitch, dance studio, Rugby pitch, um, a multi-use games area, um, sports. Artificial field. pitch. What's that? It's the, it's the artificial pitches, and it's the ones that can be really multi-use. That you know, the the kind of main 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 point here really are. Just um, from our perspective, to add that um, from the end, you when an end user is is searching for something to book, we found that they initially select the sport or that activity that they would like to do. Um, and then secondarily, um, we'll go on to that space and book that space. Um, I feel like this spec might not allow for that. It's kind of the other way around where it's space, then sport related activities to it. Um, uh, I so don't, it, would, yeah. it would allow both. So you, yeah, well, think, it would okay. mean that you could, you could search by sport and you can search by space. The difference is that um, the people who have the spaces wouldn't worry about the sports. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so if, yeah, yeah. So if you have um, the school space example, you've got 900 spaces. You only have to tag dance studio once, and then we can. There can be one central list of dance studio includes yoga, blah 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 blah, and then that automatically will then infer for a dance studio that you can do every type of dance in the activity list. You don't need the, well, yeah. I guess that's the nuance is for the provider, it's the space that they're renting, but for a user, it's the sport that they're playing and it's how those two marry up, right? Exactly. So that's good that it covers both use cases. Sorry, I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit lost though. So sorry, where does that correlation between the space and the activity happen? Oh, the or, um, facilities. Oh, sorry. You meant from a technical perspective or from a user? Oh, yes, yeah, sir, from a technical perspective, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, in the facility type list, there's an activity tag against each facility type currently. So there's an array of uh, activities against each facility type. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, can, can I ask why, um, why do we need to be so prescriptive, even <clears throat> having a centralized list of activities per facility type? Uh, might feel like, well, it feels a bit to me like overkill. As a, you know, a consumer of this data via Playfinder, you know, we'll generally have the last say of, you know, what activity, um, you know, we're going to list it as. There is an element of curation there. Is it, is it striving for a kind of perfectly automated world where, you know, you really, as a, as a consumer, um, looking to put on the marketplace, you don't even need to specify whether a football pitch can be used to play football. Um, you, you just plug it in and play. Yeah, so that's a really good shout. So the um, the idea would be that the, the the facility type list, as as a list stands alone, and, and it sounds like Playfinder would potentially use that list without the activity references. Um, but the activity references yeah. are, are there for kind of Tom's use case where perhaps there's less curation. Um, for other, yeah. if, if, if it was interested, if it was, if it was of interest to a data user to use activities as a kind of central yeah. search. Is, is that, Tom, is that, is that necessary? I mean, I, I'm totally fair enough if it is, but um, is that, is that necessary for you then? Also, I've, got, I've, I've started to get onto the relaxes. To have so that predefined I've got a quotation with, specific, um, you know, specification of the, of the activity. What the um, I would say it would be more relevant in your use case. Um, and I, I know it's definitely relevant in ours. Like if people, sorry. Anyway, let's just cut off for a second now. I'm just on my phone. Um, but yeah. 
essentially the way I'm seeing this, apologies if I'm getting confused, is that like if someone went on a marketplace like Playfinder, they would select sports that they want to play and then they would create a list of, mm. the, of, of the different places they could play that sport. Yeah. They would never search for multi-use space, I would suggest, or they would yeah. never use for... No. Do you know what I mean? That was that was the way I was seeing it, and that's what, what why I think every yeah. thing should have a correlating activity. Like even if, say, a yeah. sports hall has a correlating badminton, bad basketball, and five-a-side football because they're all the sports that can be yeah. played there, I think the end user would still book it based on that that requirement for a sport. All right. All right. No, I agree. I just uh, yeah. So right. pay find the bill always check and there's quite a lot of other work we do around each venue page to make sure that it's all looking pucker um uh and you know yeah probably i should be aiming for a kind of fully automated scenario where you just plug in it gets all the data from open active um but then you the trade-off is the trade-off is you need someone to curate that list and it sounds like that's the you know, question here is who creates that list of activities that can be played at a facility type? Is that, you know, centrally through open active or is that the uh, providers of, you know, um, the, the, so whoever's ma managing the software? I would suggest that like the flow, well, this is how it's set up on our end is the flow would be um, for the provider to select the space and then to attach relevant activities that can take place within that space. Yeah. Uh, and then that all just passes yeah. through. So that's a that, that, that's, that level. That sounds good to me. Well, so that's the question I had around this: is do, uh, allowing for that extra level of activity selection. And maybe that maybe that's where it becomes an optional thing because this is where Space yeah. was saying, you know, we've got nine hundred spaces. Do you want us to go through and tag everything, every single one that can can have yoga? Um, mm, no, definitely make it optional. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is this is like just a new thing that um, we were discussing earlier. Is that like if someone's setting up a space on the system at a system level, they would kind of have an option between single-use facility and multi-use facility. Single-use facility would be something that, say, a tennis court that you can only play tennis on, and then would be like a different flow to if you had multi-use space, which then you would essentially choose the different sports that can be played at that in that space um oh interesting so you would use you would use the activity list in combination with multi-use space facility type yeah or maybe a, a curated version of the activity list um which is what we're currently doing just based on the sports that we support or that we're interested in but like within reason so, so if you think they case, yeah no that, that makes sense but that use case would you would you consider using, and I'm just, I'm just in terms of moving away from the activity list in case that's something that, that would make sense here, because all the activity list entries that I've put in the chat there, you can reframe the activity. So uh, cricket, um, well, um, so, so basketball becomes basketball court, yeah. football becomes football pitch, um, et cetera. And so uh, trying to think about whether for multi-use space, would it be the case that you'd want to tag multi-use space basketball court for five aside football court um uh, football pitch do you see what i mean so it's a, it's like yeah, yeah. I, I would suggest there would be a better list than the activity list to manage that because yeah it's so extensive and yeah, you're not likely going to have i know like spinning in the multi-use space i think there'll be uh, an exhaustive list that could be created that suits facilities more than than that so yeah i'd advocate for that if we could pull that together yeah, that's so. That's it. So then, because then those those then could could also um, you know things like um, images, Jamie. I know we were talking about before. Um, if images were associated with those facility types, so basketball court, tennis court, etc., um, that might make basically if we have a if we have a list that's tailored that's tailored specifically for facilities, um, and we we're not trying to kind of bring the two things together, then that also makes a lot of the other things uh, more straightforward. Things like search, for example, because facilities doesn't seem to be a hierarchy. It's just, if you've got a badminton court, it's a badminton court. If you've got a basketball court, it's a basketball court. If you've got a multi-use space, you might tag something with both of those things. Um, but with, with activities, if you've got yoga, you've also got, you know, hot pod yoga and other things beneath it. And there's a whole bunch of logic around 
this hierarchy and the hundreds of stuff that sits behind it. So potentially just having kind of tags, which you're effectively tagging the space with for each court or type uh, for multi-use space, uh, including classroom, including, I mean, it kind of, yeah, maybe it is extensible in, in that way. Mm. So just to, from a hierarchical perspective, the way it's set up on our side is it goes all kind of organization and venue, then sport and then facilities. Like, so yeah, it could say basketball and it would show however many basketball courts there were. Um, the challenge you have is when, um, say there's two different size basketball courts, for example, then you might have to use like a, a name to define it at that level or that might be a, a, a secondary level uh, underneath sport um, where, we, where we've run into problems. Um, that's not to say that it, it, it can be handled. It's supposed to be handled within the spec, but just something to flag that there's a, a little bit of nuance behind that. And also, um, yeah, when you've got multi-use space, um, you basically then, so if you use a select a sport, that space shows up in those all those different sports and, just the relationship between that um that's just something we're struggling with i don't know how relevant it is to this conversation but it's just um that thought would be worth noting yeah that well that could be achieved by tagging so if you've got a multi-use space and you tag it with squash court uh well not squash court that's unlikely to be multi-use isn't it but it might be <laughs> squash court table tennis table. At the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah um vaccine center um yeah. Yeah, everything it can be used for um so uh you could ba basically you're using the the proper um space names because a multi-use space is is used for as a squash court or so as a basketball court as a badminton court um so we we did, we basically get away from needing to worry about the activity list at all and we can just use tags of facility types potentially to achieve that would there would there be a link between the uh, the court name and the activity then? So a basketball court relates to basketball. In case somebody wanted to have, uh, I don't know, show me anything, show me either classes or facilities related to basketball. Yeah, so I think this is that was the discussion exactly with uh, what what uh, Jamie was saying about the central linking or not. Um, right. Do, do we want to have a squash, do we want to have the word squash court linked to the activity squash? That might make sense because it's, there's a few like that that centrally maybe just need to be put in once. Um, and then there's a question about whether we want to allow people to also be able to tag themselves if a space can use particular things on the activity list, um, which. I think the, the whole, for example, like multi-use halls have to be like bespoke tagged because a school sports hall might not have the equipment to have a Bampton court in it, for example. That's something that I personally dealt with with school space in the last couple of weeks, which is they don't have Bampton courts, but they've got a massive sports hall that has a basketball net and a volleyball net, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, I'm not sure that there's any point linking activities to multi-use sports hall because it could be a variety of things, but the link between badminton court and badminton makes a lot more sense. But the, the link between multi sports hall and badminton doesn't. So that maybe can't be centrally mandated, I think. That makes sense. So I guess maybe the question left there is, um, would you say that for the, uh, would you say that for the badminton court scenario, you would prefer, you would expect to see multi-use as one tag and then badminton court as another tag that represents that there's a badminton court in a multi-use venue or is it that you've got badminton uh, multi-use venue as one tag and then uh badminton the activity if you sort of mean as a separate field to say that there's there's an activity possible in in multi-use i guess you are we are we thinking about the multi-use space as potentially a badminton court if you set it up right um that type of thing yeah, I think I think it's also important to note that it is a multi-use space. It's a badminton court within a multi-use space um, because there are definitely, I know this is getting specific to badminton, but there are definitely dedicated badminton places that are not a multi-use space. And exactly the same with tennis and, and like real tennis, for example. You can play real tennis on a real tennis court or you can play real tennis in a, in a sports hall somewhere. So having both of those tags is important because you need to know if... Well, 
one might need to know if it's a dedicated space or not. Um, right. So you're searching for 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 badminton court, and then in the list of results, you might find some of those are multi-use spaces, and some of them are not. Yeah, and probably most people won't care that they're both. But I think it's important to show that this is it also a multi-use space because actually it's also uh, important to know if there's going to be people next to you playing football or table tennis or something in one half of the hall and you're in you're on one side playing badminton um i personally find that very annoying so i would shy away from that for example um so yeah knowing that this one space could be used for multiple different things is important so that sounds like it, it it's a point in the in the in the box for using facility type for both because then you can search by badminton court and find badminton courts in a multi-use space and not. Um, whereas if we had an activity tag badminton used in some cases and then a badminton court used in other places, that could be confusing from a search perspective. Yeah. But I guess with the idea- I, mean, I think, sorry, just to say on that, I think you're, you're, you're risking um, quite a lot of um, errors being made by people creating those activities. <laughs> That's my, my fear on that one. If, if you have um, a badminton court and a, and a sports hall, let's say, listed, um, the people who, you know, create those, um, you know, opportunities will probably look at badminton court when they see it, they'll select it, and then they'll not know what to do when they want to try and select, you know, a football pitch to also happen there. I think you'll, you'll just end up, I, I do fear that you'll end up with um, quite a lot of mistakes being made than creating those activities. So what's the scenario there, Jamie? Sorry, they, they so they've got a, a space that they're um, they're setting up on the system. Uh, so so book tech, for example, and then yeah. where would the mistake arise? Sorry, they're they're entering the activity name. No, I'm, what's the? Yeah, I, th I, th I think what I'm what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't bring the sport um, as much as possible within the within the description of the space. Um, so we use um, a, a kind of space and then activities can be played at that space. So sports will you know, have badminton, basketball, football being played in it. Um, but I just wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put down as the space name, you know, um, sports or, uh, sorry, uh, badminton court, just um, on the basis that people might well um, Select that when they're creating the the, the facilities, um, and it's better to try and describe the space as you know what the space is rather than what the sports can be played in that space. Oh, sorry. So yes, yeah, so, uh, the uh, proposal I was suggesting here was um, the facility type would be a tag uh, rather than yeah. the name. So you might you yeah. might name the space as da da drama studio or sports hall. Um, yeah. And then you might have an image of the drama studio or sports hall, but then you might tag that for the sake of, of search uh, and yeah. categorization with the types. Okay. So you, you might have, so you might have the headline is sports hall. Uh, there's a photo of a sports hall. And then on the, on the side, you've got badminton court, uh, etc. Yeah. Okay. Can I, no, probably, yeah, that's fine. if I could um, offer kind of an example or, or, Sort of, if the if the, the aim as I expect is to model kind of the real world, I would imagine in a sports hall, um, like in a in a, a school sports hall or whatever, if if it can be used for badminton, it's probably got badminton markings on it. That's that's often how you find it. You know, a big sports hall which has basketball markings and netball markings and badminton markings on it, and so I would imagine that the the, the, the school would probably refer to the badminton markings as badminton courts, even though they are on a bigger pitch. So the way um, the way we model that is that obviously um, you can have parent and child relationships between courts. So you've got your sports hall um, on which you can play netball or basketball. And then there are three child courts, which are badminton courts on which you can play badminton, or it could be hired to, uh, you know, um, active camp, so that they could have a kids camp on. Does that um, that badminton court it doesn't have to be played, but 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 it is by virtue of it having been 
you know, segregated by the lines, a badminton court, and that's how they refer to it, doesn't necessarily mean that badminton has to be played on it. So I think I, um, I expect there will always be some element of the activity name going along with the thing that is bookable, even though you might not be booking the, that particular activity on that thing that is, that is um, so I guess there's always gonna be a little bit of confusion there potentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because um, otherwise, what would you call that section of the court where you could play badminton? Quarter portion of of the hall. Yeah. That's just not how they would refer to it. I don't think. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, no, I, I, I think um, I think you're right. You could probably completely ignore what I said. Um, uh, but I just um, uh, I I. I think if you can start by describing the space and then um, what what happens at that space is the best way to to go about this. Um, on to just to add on to the point um, around the kind of whether the user needs to know whether it's a multi use space or not. Is that not like a separate field that can be defined um, by the provider in the case that I suggested earlier, where they would essentially select single case, single use, multi use then that would represent a field which then can be displayed to the end user so they're aware that it is taking place on a multi-use um, environment. So that's a good question we came, because when you get into the, I suppose, the advantage of having like a, as Tim said, like a bag of tags, which are gonna be whatever they're gonna be, uh, you know, the, the sports hall tag, the, the, the badminton court tag, the whatever, and, and I suppose as Matt says, you can attribute badminton court to a part of a sports hall or a hall thing or whatever. Um, so there's yeah. quite a lot of flexibility there. Um, in terms of getting into the, the weeds on one of those things and defining multi-use or not multi-use, it's an interesting question. I mean, because we, 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 yes, it could it, it could be a it could be value in that. I'm just just reflecting that it might be that having a tag that just says you know sports hall or something that infers uh, that might be because you could you could even I mean you could even take the types that are multi-use and tag them as multi-use if you said I mean like one level removed so a sports hall is multi-use by definition a multi-use games area is multi-use by definition so if you've mm. got one of those tags you could infer multi-use um, rather than kind of um, creating a very a very specific distinction uh, because I mainly because I don't know if if we went down the road of very very specific distinctions how many others there might be like that that you need to model as well but it's just a just a thought. I don't know if everyone else thinks. Yeah, yeah, I tend to yeah. agree. Anyway, I've got, um, I agree with that. I, is there is there such a thing as a, a single use, you know, pitch? Because even though it's a tennis court, again, you might have active camp on it, kids kids games on it. Same with the squash court. You, yes, it's a squash court, but you can book it for other activity so i think yeah, everything is multi-use in that regard it's just uh, what are the uh, available uses on that pitch and who who uh, who defines that and that's got to be the, the people who are running the center surely because it's not up to open active to tell them that they that badminton courts can be used for this they say yes you can use our badminton court for zumba whatever mm. There are some very, I know of some very specific badminton and tennis clubs that do not allow people to do anything else on them because they're very protective over it. Um, so I think it would be import important to define that this is only for tennis or badminton. And but by virtue, by virtue of them specifying that tennis is the only thing you can do on this court, that makes it, it doesn't mean that you couldn't do anything else on this court. It's just that they say you can do this thing on this court. Yeah, just to add to that, actually, we've actually got a customer who has basketball courts, but quite a lot of the bookings are for filming, uh, like music videos, for example, like that's like from an end user perspective, someone that's searching to book for music videos wouldn't necessarily find it by going basketball, then there, then, then there. So just a consideration to add. But yeah, I, I tend to agree. But yeah, it's kind of should be in the control of the, the provider as such to define what can take place. Okay, so how does, sorry, I'm a bit lost. So 
the we've got a sort of series of tags, you know, things like multi-use or badminton court or whatever, very, very open-ended that way. And we want to associate them with activities. And clearly it has to be on the provider to state what activities are considered suitable um, for that particular space. Um, and those would be taken from the activity list. Um, uh, so I, I'm not sure we've got quite that far. So potentially we've got, a, so bag of tags for facility types. I think the question of whether they are associated centrally for the obvious cases, squashes, a squash court, et cetera. Um, or whether to allow people to tag the space with activities. So maybe that's the, maybe that's the final thing to, to kind of uh, specifically cover is, 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 there, is there value in, in using the activity tags at all? I mean, because uh, I guess one hypothesis could be the activity list and its hierarchical form and the 600 activities that are gonna continue to grow as, they, as EMD uh, has their way with the list um, for all the good reasons. Um, you know, exercise, move, dance, uh, sorry, acronyms. Um, so, you know, they'll have, uh, yeah, all sorts of different types of Zumba as that continues to evolve. So whether it just makes sense to just disentangle that from facility types entirely, because the facility types don't grow anywhere near the same rate. And maybe we, we, we don't need people to be tagging uh, what the space can be used for from a activity perspective. Uh, to Matt's point, it can be used for basically anything. I mean, there's nothing to stop you turning up and doing a particular type of Zumba in a particular type of badminton court, um, if you want to use the badminton court space. Do you need to be prescriptive on that, though? Well, we need to allow the providers to be prescriptive, right? That's the... Well, so I suppose the question is, is there value in asking providers to, or, or having the option of, of, you, of specifying activities alongside activities from the activity list right rather than because because if the facility types list was extended to include all types of activities that are relevant the uh, chat window kind of covers some of them but you know badminton court about basketball court etc um is there still a need to explicitly allow providers to to tag activities um or are we just then creating more work for potentially the providers um to uh, to do that and is is it, is it, I mean, it might, have, it might have been a good idea when we thought that the activity list was like the central thing that would work for everything. But mm -hmm. as more and more of these nuances and use cases have come out and we found challenges around classrooms, multi-use games areas, et cetera, images, all the rest of it. Um, is it, is it just time to do a wholesale U-turn and say, you know what, the activity list is great for activities for, for classes and, and such and events, but the facilities require a, a different list separately managed, maybe in you know, a different committee if, if it's managed in that way, um, et cetera. I'd vote I, I for would, that. I would not be so sure I think they're duplicating work. Um, you know, private side football, I think will be an activity. Um, as well, you know, um, a game of tennis. I think that um, if you're duplicating, you know, the, 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 the work there, then I think you're, you're, you're gonna end up with, um, with more confusion, not less. You know, I think people recognize the activity list for what it is, which is you know the, the activity type. Um, uh, but I would just make I would make that more flexible to include um, you know more more types of bookings. And I wouldn't have it as a mandatory field on on facility type. If someone just wants to put up a, a sports hall, then they will see that. Um, they don't need to to specify the, the activities that are played there. Well, I suppose it's it, being clear about exactly what data. So, so maybe two world potential options, uh, just uh, for the sake of illustration. In, in one option, you have uh, the facility type sports hall and activity badminton, basketball as separate fields. Yeah. Um, in, in another world, you have facility type uh, sports hall and facility type uh, badminton and badminton court and facility type basketball court. Um, and and there and so in in both worlds you get the same information. It's just that in the facility to type only world, um, then it's constrained to things that make sense in that context. Um, and then the lists can all be shorter, and everyone's using the same kind of uh, descriptions for it for, for things. Um, but, I, but I would this is where I can get a bit confusing. But I would say that you know the first case you said there, where you have the facility type of sports hall, and then the activity type is badminton. I think that's the, you know, preferred method in my perspective. 
if you have, have more than one type of facility type within the same space, I think you just because there is no real concept of space in in open active from what I can gather from there. So you have the facility type and you have associated activity. Isn't that right? I, just my perspective here, Jamie, would be that um, practically, like I, in theory, I can see why you would do that, but in 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 practice, say a provider was using a system, book tech, played, whatever, to list their space, and then they wanted to suggest the activities that can take place in that space. If that the in the like a, if it's a form and they then they have this huge activity list of stuff that's completely irrelevant to most of it, most of it's completely irrelevant to or to space. And what they then do is have bad user experience because there's loads of stuff to ch choose from and they select probably as many things as they can which then makes it irrelevant to the end user who is seeing courts when they're searching for spinning or whatever it might be i mean have we finally found a use for scots collections um you know if the, if the problem is simply that the activity list is really really far too large to be to be useful um I mean, is it the case that it's just that we need a subset of the activity list? It's a good question. So, so there's a, there's a, it, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a modeling dilemma here because either we're modeling the space or modeling what you can do in the space. And the problem with modeling what you can do in the space is that a lot of the edge cases that have come to light, classroom, um, you know, uh, multi-use games area, things that have been raised, um, are, don't really fit in the kind of what you can do in the space category. Um, they're kind of more about the space. And so, it, it, yeah, so, so we, could, we could definitely create, because what we end up doing then is introducing non-activities into the activity list. So we end up introducing multi-use games area into the activity list. And then we would potentially have someone who could tag a class with that, I guess, unless they didn't filter out on their side. Um, so it's kind of a, it's, yeah, we-, we the, the, Remiga, the Remiga shouldn't be in the activity list. It should be a facility. Isn't that the case? A mooger isn't an activity, so it's a, well. I suppose is it, is it a tag uh, that you could apply to a to a facility type, facility use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the question is if a if a mooger is not in an activity list, then what is the activity that you would select if you just wanted to hire that space, but you had to select an activity? Um. So. Could you, this perhaps goes into the space hire question, which is, you know, you specify within the activity list that it is just the space hire that you're, that you're, that you're doing, that you're not, um, you know, that you are making a, a, a MUGA available just to book as, as the MUGA as well as, as a tennis court and as a netball court. Um, you know, I think you'll have two different activities on the same facilities so like a, a, a tennis court can be used for netball and they've got two different prices um and so you know you put one activity on um uh on the mooga that has got one price and you put another that's another price but if you want to cover the the case of space hire then you know we would need to include that in you know in the activity list to say you're just hiring the space um as well as a kind of catch-all for, for for those scenarios I suppose then that that isn't an activity that would go on the list potentially. Is that where it kind of breaks a bit? Because we would we would then have to we would then have to add non activities to the activity list. Mm. Um, yeah, just just I mean, to, just so I can get my head yeah, around this. Sorry, Jamie. Um, is, there's not a current existing facility list, right? Not more than what uh, you guys put together in 2019 yeah. or whatever it was the uh, but that's actually yeah i think from my perspective there's there's too much there's too many differences between facilities and set and activities um for it to for it to use the same activity list i would suggest and a, a new one would be um the what i would suggest I think what we need, given that we've only got 10 minutes on the call, um, 
I think, think we actually there's issues to talk about, Tim. That's what we need. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, can we can we visualise that? I think would be a helpful helpful um, thing to do is just visualise what the hierarchy is. And... Well, I, I think actually moving back from that, it's it's kind of about requirements. Is actually I'm, I'm not too clear on. We seem to be supporting. We want people to be able to search by activity. We want people to be able to search by facility type. We want to correlate those two things. Um, and that's where we set, kind of seem to be falling apart because we also don't necessarily want to get stuck modeling all of those things. Um, and I'm getting a little bit lost in terms of what behavior we're actually trying to support. Um, and I, I think we've hit this muddle because there's been because in fact we always at some points want to do all of those things but we don't want to get stuck doing them all the time uh, which is why how we've ended up with this initial problem of three issues that turn into one that then split into three again um so i think if we could just maybe list out use cases at the end of the issue um linked to and pick this up again in next week's call the regularly scheduled call um, then maybe we can we can hammer it out there because I, I feel like we're kind of picturing slightly different scenarios that we're trying to support. Does that does that make sense? Because I, I don't think we're going to get this wrapped up in eight minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. So so use cases uh, and and yeah, we can. I mean, from a visual perspective, also it would be possible to I guess I suppose you you just imagine a couple of user interfaces where someone's selecting things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that would look yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. think in those use cases, it'd be useful just to lay out the, the, the kind of operator and consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. We're trying to sync up the operator and the consumer, and they don't necessarily represent things the same way. And I think, yeah, the consumer is hungry for a lot of information, and we want to prevent the, the operator from having to supply lots of information and how, yeah. yeah, where that comes from, where that extra information gets injected. Is a is a live question, I think. But but I think also like if we're talking about things like the test suite, we don't want to we don't want it to fail because someone has got a space that's not listed within facility use or it's an activity that's not listed within the activity list. And you know, one thing I would, would suggest just making that much more flexible. Well, so I think that's that's a really interesting question because we we should well if. If, this, if the, uh, the activity list is done well, uh, then we shouldn't be in a position where people are tagging things that are, that are not in the list. Um, and it's pretty comprehensive now, I mean, from a kind of non-facility perspective. Um, it's rare that, that that's, a, that's an issue um, because there's always yeah. something higher in the hierarchy that you know that's relevant. At least they can say it's, ex it's group exercise, even if they can't say, oh, it's, it's, it's yoga, even if the type of yoga they've just invented isn't in there, et cetera. Um, but, the, uh, but the facility, the facility type side of this seems to be more, I, I suppose, immature in terms of the kind of how evolved it is. But I, I wonder whether we can get just just because we haven't spent as much time on it as we have the activity list, um, and we spent obviously a lot of time on the activity list. So I just wonder whether it would be possible to get. I mean, we probably would need some quick iteration at the beginning on the on the um, facility use list um, if we did facility types list. If we did have one, but I imagine looking through the school space data and the various data we've got access to about the different types that are available it's not kind of a crazy infinite number of of space types do you know what i mean it's it's still quite um yeah defined yeah it's, it's about i think rooms and spaces are probably the more you know, where, where, where this is becoming more complex right and if we want to support schools we're going to need to support classrooms even though it's not strictly a kind of health fitness sport kind of thing. Yeah, and, and if we had a facility types list, then classroom is just a type which can go in there and could be used for meditation, um, mm. for example. Okay. Use cases. <laughs> use cases. Um, cool. Yeah, use cases and diagrams as appropriate. I mean, uh, use cases seems like ultimately what things are going to boil down to. But if, if looking at this in terms of UI, if thinking about functionality that way is, is more correct, then, then let's do it that way. I think we just need to have more documentation of what we're trying to achieve before Yay. we up again. Yeah. That sounds good. And it's definitely worth uh, having a good robust discussion about this because obviously the implications of this are quite big in terms of 
everyone's systems and, and building and we yeah. don't think everyone on the yeah. call is going to have to expend some effort to, to to move if we did decide to to do so but um but if we did it yeah yeah but but i mean i so so just a general observation i've had from our own implementation but also helping schools pass is you know the, the the specifications can be quite restrictive in some cases and i just wonder whether we, we need to um, err on the side of providing more flexibility rather than trying to funnel people into specific use cases the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the problem is aggregation, really. I guess that's the issue is that if we've got lots of if we've got lots of flexibility, it gets harder to parse um, across multiple providers. Um, but again, yeah, maybe maybe that is something we have to sacrifice. Um, this is the yeah, it's also worth saying that one of the, the bits of feedback that, um, that various uh, external people who've kind of looked at the, 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 the data we've got at the moment is there's too much flexibility. Um, and although obviously we've argued in, in all the all places that that flexibility is necessary because we're modeling a complicated domain, um, nonetheless, that extra flex, that flexibility does create more work for anybody who's um, who's trying to use the data. And um, so, yeah, I guess there's a, but it, yeah, yeah, it sounds like it's a good discussion to have because the balance is probably not we, we, we are already flexible and we probably in some places need to be more flexible and some people places need to be less so it's just uh, figuring out the minimum amount of flexibility I guess we can get away with yeah yeah um, and I'd be it, it, it's interesting because I think unlike activities it's very hard to abstract about spaces I think I mean spaces have got particular characteristics that are that are sort of immutable um, so it might be it might be a slightly different kind of it might be a less controlled vocabulary um, but yeah. Uh, I hope not, for all the reasons Nick just said. <laughs> uh, also, you've, we've still got name as a free text field for the, the facility use. So uh, they, if they come up with a, you know, if they're trying to sell a space in the pirate ship, they would still have pirate ship is, is you know, room in cabin on pirate ship is the name of the space. And then it might just be tagged as uh, as classroom or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, we'll definitely revisit that example. It's a nice one. Um, Okay, thanks for joining. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't close the discussion off, but I think now we know what the question is better. I think. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. so I'll see you. I'll see yeah, you at the regularly scheduled call next week then, and the agenda will. Uh, can, you me an, can you send me an invite for that? I um, uh, I, I I I think I've dropped off the invites to my end. Sure, I'll, I'll, everybody who's currently on the call will receive will receive an invite. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Thanks, Thanks all. Cheers, then. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.